Special thanks to Croc for sponsoring today's video. In this video, I'm gonna show you a pretty cool video collaboration tool I've been using for my podcast. This tool allows me to collaborate with my video editor and to organize and keep track of my projects. I'm gonna be showing you how to use the tool online, how to create projects, different tags, and to organize your workflow, as well as all the cool features, including the storyboard feature, the review tools, and best of all, the Premiere Pro integration that makes making revisions and working on projects really easy. If you're interested, you can start a free trial today. If you choose to go with them, you can use my promo code John the Video Guy at checkout to receive 20% off your order. But now let's take a look at the Croc platform. So to get started, this is what the Croc interface looks on the web browser. You can see that we have different projects made and you can create a new project by clicking on the new project button at the top left. You can name your project. So I'm gonna type in a name of one of my podcast episodes, and then I'm gonna click Create Project. Now inside the project, you can add a due date by clicking on the Add Due Date button underneath the project name. You can select the date in the time picker, and then click Set Due Date. You can add projects to your favorites by clicking on the Start button, and this will also add it to the Favorites bar on the left side. So you can see that it's added to our Favorites section. If we go back out to the Projects, you can see that we've added our project here. And also you can change to the Calendar View, which is located at the top right and this displays all your projects by the due date on a calendar so you can easily see when projects are due if we go out forward in time I have all my podcasts and the due date associated with them so that way me and my editor can keep track on which podcasts need to be edited first and if we're on track or not so if we go back to projects you can add team members by clicking on the workspace button at the top left then go to the team button you can invite members to join your team by clicking on the invite members button at the top left. You can easily add in someone's email address and then click invite to invite them to your team. Let's go back into the project we just created. So inside each project, you can add what are called stages. So for example, we can click on the create stage button and we can name our stage. So let's create a stage for our Riverside recordings since that's what I use to record my podcast episode. And I'm gonna upload the raw footage to this stage. From the right side, there's stage types. So you can choose from file stage, board, folder, or link. I'm gonna choose folder for this one. Then I'm gonna click create step. You can see that we've created our stage and then we can click on it to go inside of it. We can go to our finder and click and drag in our raw videos to upload them to Croc. Once it's uploaded, you'll see it loaded in the left. You can also use tags to organize your stages and projects. To enable tags, go to the sprocket icon at the top right and click on tags. You can see the tags underneath the stage. You can click on the plus button and click create new tag. So for this, maybe I wanna add a new tag for the raw recordings. I'm gonna type in raw recordings. You can choose a color and then click create. You can also create tags for projects. So to do that, you can go back out to the projects menu. You can go once again up to the top right to the sprocket, click on tags to show tags click on a tag and then click create new tag. I'm gonna make a tag called podcasts and then choose a color and then click create. And then you can add the podcasts tag to all the other podcasts by clicking on the tag button and then choosing podcasts. So that's a quick overview of Croc. Now let's dive into their storyboard feature, which is really cool and can come in handy, especially if you create storyboards for your projects. So in this example, I'm gonna create a storyboard to show my video editor how the intro of my podcast should be. That way, once they get into editing, they have a stronger idea of how to create that intro for my podcast. So if I go back into my project, I can click on the add stage button. I can name my stage, so I'm gonna add the name podcast intro storyboard. And then from the stage type drop down, I'm gonna click on board, then click create step. Then I'm gonna click on my stage and then you'll see that this menu pops up. Now, one thing I recommend when creating a storyboard is to create a CSV file or a comma separated value file. Add your notes in the different stages that you'd like to add to your storyboard. As you can see here, you can import a CSV file from the top right. So if we click on it, I'm gonna to navigate to my CSV file. You can see that I've already put together the notes for each frame of my storyboard. So all these will be automatically imported as different frames. If I click open, I can click on the dropdown and choose notes. This will add each line as their own note and then click import. Now you can see that different frames have been created inside my board here. And you can see that each note is added to each frame. So this is an easy way to add your notes into each frame of your storyboard. And as you can see at the top left, you have different view options. You can click on grid view and this displays the frames in a grid. You can also choose table view and you can also choose animatic view. This kind of displays it as like a timeline, which is really cool. So you can watch it back like a movie. Now, if we go back to grid view for now, if you hover over a frame, you have three different options. You can choose to add and upload a file to an existing frame. You can choose to AI generate a frame or you can choose to draw on your storyboard. 
So for this first one, I'm gonna click on draw. This will pop up the draw options. So from the menu down below, I'm gonna increase my brush size and now I can start drawing on my frame. So I'm just gonna draw out a little stick figure man. I'm gonna draw out another stick figure guy just to show my editor what it should be on screen with a line down the middle. Then you can click send. This will upload that drawing to that frame. You can switch to the next frame by clicking on the frame next to it. For this, I'm gonna use a file that I already have to illustrate that a pre-made motion graphic of the podcast logo should display here. So instead of draw, I'm gonna click on the add button. This will allow you to upload an image. So as you can see, we've added in our image here. We can go to the next frame by clicking on this. And then for this, I'm gonna also draw this out. So I'm gonna click on the draw button once again. I'm gonna choose to increase my brush size. And then once again, draw out my little stick figure. You also have other draw options. So for this, I'm gonna draw out a rectangle for the Riverside logo. So I'm gonna click draw out a rectangle, use the text to add in Riverside logo. And once I have that set, I'm gonna click send. And then for the next frame, I'm gonna once again, upload a reference image for the screen recording. I'm gonna click add and then just upload the screenshot that I took. Then for the last frame, let's try out the AI generate tool. So when you click on AI generate, you have a lot of different styles you can choose from. By default, it's set to sketch, but if you click on the drop down, you have a lot of different styles that you can choose from, from photorealistic to 3D to cinematic. So you can explore a lot of the different options here. Once you choose your style down below, you can either choose to have the prompt follow your notes that you've added, or you can also choose to add in a custom prompt. So for now, I'm gonna click on custom. Then I'm gonna type in my custom prompt. So in this case, I'm gonna add in two people talking on a podcast. Then you can click generate frame at the bottom right. And this will generate the AI image. Now, if we go back into grid view here, you can add different timestamps to each frame. So you can add in how long each frame should be up on the screen. That way your editor knows how long each frame should be when they go to edit your video. And then once you're ready to download your storyboard, you can click on the download button at the top right. You can choose to download as a PDF, which I prefer, and then you can choose the orientation. So I prefer landscapes, so I'm gonna choose that, and then click download at the bottom right. As you can see, we've downloaded our storyboard. So this is what it looks like when you download it from Croc. So that's an overview of their storyboard. Now let's take a look at some of the review tools. All right, so my editor, Andre, just finished the first draft of the podcast episode and he uploaded it as a new stage inside Croc. Now I can leave comments by clicking on the video. So I'm gonna click play. And what's really nice, you can leave real-time comments. So I can just click stop and then click right on the video itself. And you'll notice that a comment field will appear at the top of the screen. I can type in my comment, so I can type in the changes I'd like to see, and then I can add an at mention by clicking on the little at symbol, and then I can choose to add Andre so that he receives a notification of this comment when it's posted. You also have an option to draw on the comment, so I can click on the draw option, and I can draw out maybe an arrow pointing to the text that I wanna change and maybe underline it. Once I'm ready, I can click send, and this will add the comment to the right-hand side. So now Andre will be notified of this comment. If you need to edit a comment, you can click on the ellipses and go to edit comment. For example, I wanna add the link to the font, so I'm gonna paste in the link to download this font. That way my editor, Andre, can download the font directly and use it in the project. Going back to Croc, we can go forward in time and add another comment here, this time about the middle line. So I'm gonna add in a note to add in the middle line graphic for the opening shot. And once again, we can add some elements here. So I'm gonna change the color to green and add in a square graphic to illustrate the middle line graphic that I wanna add. I'm gonna click and draw out a middle line graphic here on the video. And then once again, go back to brush. And I can add in some arrows so I'm gonna change the color back to red and just add in some arrows to annotate on the video and maybe a little squiggle line to draw attention to this area. And then you can also attach files to comments. So if you click on this little paperclip icon, you can choose to attach files. So I'm gonna upload the middle line Photoshop file that I'm referencing. That way Andre can see it directly inside the comment and download it and use it directly in the project. Then I'm gonna click send and this will add that to the side as well. One other thing when it comes to comments is that you can actually add a comment over a duration of time. So for example, if I wanted to add B-roll to the sequence here, but I want it to be over a span of time, you can click and drag on the timeline at the bottom to add a comment over a span of time. So for example, I'm gonna click and drag out in between one minute and 10 seconds and one minute and 22 seconds. And then I'm gonna add my comment of adding B-roll of Riverside's Magic Clips feature. That way Andre knows the exact time frame in which 
she should add that B-roll to the video. And once again, I can upload the video. So I'm gonna upload the reference video and then click done. Now you'll notice by default, my comments are added to the team. But if I wanted to add it to everyone, I can click on the team and change it to everyone by clicking on it and going to share. So if you share this file with external customers, they'll be able to see the comment. If you keep it on team, only your team members will see the comment. So it depends which comments you wanna have visible in your project. Now you can see that Andre did add a comment when he uploaded the video. You can choose to respond to comments by clicking on the reply button. And you can also leave emoji reactions by clicking on the emoticon button. Now that Andre has the revision notes, let's see how he can access Croc inside Premiere Pro to make the revisions. The first thing you have to do is install the Croc extension inside Premiere Pro. And you can do this inside Adobe Exchange. So inside Adobe Creative Cloud, just go to Stock and Marketplace, go over to the Plugins tab, and then from the top, search for Croc. It should pop up underneath Plugins. Just click on it and then click Install at the top right. Now inside Premiere Pro to access it, you can go up to Window Extensions Croc.io. This will load the panel. You can select the project that you're working on. So I'm gonna click on the current project, go into this current stage that my video is referencing, and then I can easily click on the comments. And you'll notice that my playhead jumps forward to the point in time associated with the comment, which is really nice. Now you can also choose to sync markers down at the very bottom of the panel. So if we click on this, this will create markers inside Premiere Pro with the comments. And if we go over to the markers panel and we click on the timeline, you can see that we've added markers and you can see the comments are also imported with the markers. Now, another cool feature inside Croc is that you can upload different versions of the same stage. So let's say Andre finishes with the second draft. You can upload it as a separate version inside Croc. So I'm back inside Croc, and as you can see at the top, there's a dropdown under version one. When Andre uploads another version, he can click create new version here. And as you can see, he's uploaded version two. So if I click on it, we can see that this is its own version inside the stage here. Now, the other nice thing is that you can compare the versions side by side. So let's say if we click the drop down, you can go to compare versions. And you can see that you have both visible. I can see the difference where he changed the text for this font here. So I can see side by side. I can see that he added the middle line graphic. And it's nice that you can compare it with the original version. Now you can not only leave comments on video files, you can also annotate audio files as well. So let's say if Andre uploads the audio version of the podcast, I can also leave comments directly inside the audio file if I need separate edits for the audio version. So for the second draft, I asked Andre to upload the audio only. That way I can leave comments on the audio only version of the podcast. So it works the same way as a video. You can click on it. And same thing, you can just easily click and drag out over a period of time, write in a comment, and it works the same way as video. Now let's see how we can share the stage with other external clients. So say if I wanted to share this video with other you know, people outside of my organization, you can easily do that using Croc. You can do that by going to share at the top right. And you can click on the share link with unregistered users. You can go to create new link at the bottom left. And then you have settings to the right so you can allow downloads, show comments. So if you wanted to hide comments, you can choose to hide comments. You can choose to show all versions. So let's say if you only wanted, you know, the clients to be able to see version two, you can uncheck it so they don't see the earlier versions. Then if we click create link, and then click copy link. Then inside another private browser window, I can paste it inside the URL. As you can see, we have this link that we can share to clients. They can go in. You can see they only have access to version two, which is nice. They can't see the comments on the right side. So you can customize the viewing settings depending on who you need to share the files with. Like let's say if you only wanted to share the draft stage and not the Riverside recordings and assets for the podcast, we can go back in here and you can actually go inside the stage, inside draft specifically. And then when you're inside the stage, you can click the share button at the top. You can click on create new link. Once again, you can choose to show comments or not. So I'm gonna hide comments, hide show all versions. You can set an expiration date if you wish or a password. But for now, I'm gonna click create link. And then with this, I'm gonna click copy. And now the client only has access to the drafts stage of this project. So that's an overview of Croc. If you're interested, you can start a seven day free trial. I will leave a link to it down in the video description. But if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. But that does it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.